Thank also, you did you see the price of this watch before reading this? Okay, yeah. then let's just, I want you to read that. Oh, yeah. Okay. It yeah. feels I've seen wrong. The no, we definitely talked about it. Yeah, okay, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to uh, jump into it? Sure. Okay. That's right. I know. Why do I not remember? Don't worry. You'll remember. You'll be shocked. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to make a shocked face when you say it. Okay. What? what? <laughs> He's up for the YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. And we've got a whole bunch of stuff since we last saw you and talked to you. It's funny how that works out. When when we have like a guest episode, we, we take a quick break and suddenly there's just like a ton. Just piles. It's also that time of year, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to go through, let's see, the, the thought of the Zen phone disappearing crossed everybody's mind for various reasons. Uh, also, we have our first confirmation about the Cybertruck event, a new smartwatch leak from nothing, a weird PlayStation portable device, and of course, something of a leak from Google. It doesn't happen often, but we have a bit of a sneak peek of some Google stuff, so we're going to talk about all of that. But first, something completely unrelated to all of that. Look under your seats. Everybody look under your seats. Audio listeners, look under your seats, but not if you're driving. <laughs> no, yeah. Keep your eyes on the road. <laughs> Please, what careful. you're looking at is, uh, for listening audio to. listeners, a bunch of boxes that we're about to take out the box. What it looks like is just a regular Shure SM7B box, but if you look carefully oh. on the side, there's a colorware seal, which means, it can only mean one thing, that these are Color. customized Shure SM7Bs for the podcast mm -hmm. from Colorware. If uh, you're an audio listener and you don't know what a Shure SM7B <laughs> is, it's a microphone. You've it seen it, trust me. Yeah. If you're an audio listener, use your mind's eye to envision what this looks like. We're going to unbox them live on we the are. podcast. I don't know if we're going to set them up live. I don't know. Do you know when they lot. started doing these? Because I know they were doing the, isn't like the MV7 is the USB version? And they were doing that for a while. Yeah. And, and then I recent. saw this and posted about it. And then our friends at Colorware yeah, they were like, like, we Christmas. got you. Oh, Wait, did we so buy these or did they hook us up? They hooked us up. With Whoa, these. colorware. <laughs> Dang. You didn't have to go that far. I appreciate you. Oh, wait. Wow. Oh, Yo, wow. that's wow. so sick. Wait, that's sick. That's sick. I didn't know that. Me neither. Okay, hold on. I got to take it. Oh, away. did I not tell you guys that part? No, you what didn't. Is, can you guys say what it is? All right, so uh, these look the same as our regular mics generally, except the ring around the center that is normally black is the red for the MKBHD Red. And something I didn't even anticipate is on the bottom of the microphone, they embossed, or I don't oh, even know what that's considered. They just painted it. Painted? They painted the MKBHD, the, the waveform the specifically waveform logo, logo yeah. on the bottom. It also, it is matte black. I know it looks similar, but it's definitely like oh, it is a matte, matte finish, yeah. You're oh, right. You're I right. couldn't, com I was about to compare them. I was like, <laughs> Marquez uses an R RE27. Yo, Colorware, if you guys could do this to an RE27, that would be unreal. I know they they might do one offs once in a while. They'd rather mass produce a bunch of Probably. these. That's an Ari, an Ari. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't know they made microphones. No. An Electro Voice Ari twenty seven. Literally, I use this mic because I like the way it sounds. I think the SM seven Bs sound great, but there's something of a tenor to my voice, and now you guys are used to hearing it this way, and I like it. And but I, I like this a lot. Everyone so, says that we sound the same, so should I just also be using one of those mics? No, because then we then, sound too similar. Yeah, then right. people won't be able to figure out. You're right, yeah, right. It just sounds like Marquez talking to himself yeah. and me chiming in every once in a while. <laughs> that would be a weird podcast. <laughs> but like Colorware literally, like when they do these painted things, they literally mm -hmm. like disassemble the thing, paint mm -hmm. the pieces, and reassemble them. So I don't know if they're capable of doing that to this mic but if they did i would that seems like it would be much harder that seems yeah. like a way more complicated mic it? than these these are know. generally pretty simple in terms of like the casing that you pop off i believe but those like would the know more than i would standard yeah all right do all right, we guys, want to he, install all of them now of course we just, do okay. well, well through we the, do magic the magic of editing, of editing. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i knew it was happening all right let's video you know how do i sound oh, oh my smokes <laughs> he's kind of plugged in already it's i think they're so pretty loud. sweet it's so loud in my ears right now all right you ready okay all right through the magic of editing we will be back baby <laughs> wow look at this look at that they're all installed so nice wait what did we just discover ellis can you show Everybody, it's they painted the they painted what is that even the, called? The cardioid like the inside. Is that what it's called? The cardioid. The tiny no. screen inside. <laughs> Ellis would know. 
Uh, I don't know what that's called. Wow. Or is it just like a structure to hold the, the windscreen? Yeah, the, the cap- microphone the gate. The capsule. The capsule. Yeah. Well, they painted the inside, which you would never see. <laughs> Test it. Whoa. Uh-oh. That's no good. All right. Through the magic of editing, we will be right back back we figured it out it, the, mic, the mic is fine <laughs> everything's great everything was fine wow Wait, it looks great on the producer mic because of the logos just right there that's huge yeah, although that's i think huge. we need to flip that's that true. plate upside down you can't I, even really see it on really? ours no it's the right way no, it's perfect yeah it's perfect to those just uh, yeah. for, for the record can i can i borrow this yes just i want you guys to hear the difference between the re27 and the sm7b and let me know in the comments if i should stick with the re27 or move to the much prettier sm7b this is me on the RE27. This is me on the SM7B. This is me on the RE27. This is me on the SM7B. That's I'm sick. not changing the way I'm talking at all. Significant. That's just the difference between these two mics. That does sound significantly different. Just let me know. It sounds yeah. you so sound, much different. I think you sound better on that. On That's yours. what I'm saying. But yeah. I can't tell if you sound better or I'm just so used to, used to hearing you for the last hundred plus episodes <laughs> in that. Andrew, now you talk on Mark Yeah, yeah, yeah wait, Let yeah, me yeah, try yeah, this. Try it. Wow. Oh, it's so far away. What? How do I end this? Waveform was produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. Waveform was produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. Wow, there's a lot more bass. Waveform was produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. This is the SM7B. This is the RE27. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to do the the uh, the audio man explains, or do you just want to get into our busy podcast today? How We're fast? Busy. <laughs> we'll we'll decide based on the comments on this episode if we if we should do it next episode. Okay. Yeah, I like it. So get yeah. ready. All right. We knew, yeah, we knew this would be a, a busy time of the year, and uh, judging by the couple of event invites that have all happened very recently, it's definitely about to be the busy time of year. So we know there's going to be an Apple event on September 12th, I believe. Mm-hmm. That's probably going to be iPhone. We're also suspecting new Apple Watch, suspecting new AirPods, maybe some M3 Max along the way. That could be another event later, but that's a bunch of stuff there. Um, we're also going to have a Pixel event in New York City on October 4th. We got an invite to that. Mm-hmm. That should be Pixel 8 Pixel 8 Pro, and maybe some headphones, who knows? And the Pixel Watch 2 is supposed oh, yeah. to come out. A watch as well. Hopefully oh, that one's oh, good, better than yeah. oh, the right. first one. Better, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. and a whole bunch of other stuff coming up. I mean, it's that time of year. It's every time anyone, this is one of those things, anytime anyone ever asks about our job, and they're like, is there like a busy time of year? I'm always like, yeah, all of the products and most important stuff that has to be on the shelf by the holiday season starts coming out in September and October. Yeah. And that's what we're about to get into. So make sure you subscribe to all the channels and, and watching all the videos that come out because it's going to be good. This first ever podcast episode was called Smartphone Season and came out mid-August. It's a good, so, yeah, uh, it's a good title for it. It's Smartphones to- and money more things galore it's gonna be great can i uh <laughs> can i share something about the uh oh yeah the, uh, oh, so tell us. apple you know every year they're hiding clues about what they're going to show off in the invite in the little art that they put in the invite mm-hmm. so i know next week we were talking we're going to make some predictions about what we think but i just wanted to get out there early because sure. i think i cracked the code oh, before yeah. anyone and i uh took the time to mock up some renders okay to, oh, um, goodness. oh wow to do it. So we all were looking at it. I thought that Apple looked and be what we'll put up the, the Apple invite. It's sort of the shape of the Apple logo, but it has these sort of ripples in it and it's made of stars. And it's, I it's made it was, of titanium. Is that what you think? Definitely. <laughs> See, I think. Oh, boy. I think it's supposed to be the Among Us guy. It does. There right. Is. Right. And I think this is their they're announcing that launching with apple vision will be among us vr and i actually took time to make some some renders i want to share with you oh no I'm this is the big news Slack. i really think you know they were really this is really what they were hinting at so i'm this is my first official prediction <laughs> wait renders included how did you <laughs> for audio listeners it is among us listen among us characters mocked up as the invitation yeah mm. and it does look wait ai hey, did this, this oh, well i did this but yeah, I did this by, with AI by typing it <laughs> into AI. Yeah, no, no, you, I, you made this. <laughs> I made this. <laughs> it's that time of year, folks. Uh, speaking of smartphones, <laughs> the Zen phone had a moment. In this it past it was a very moment. quick moment. The moment was weird. I remember seeing on Twitter there was this headline 
or I think someone put it in the Slack. It was like yeah. an Android Authority article about how the Zen phone is rumored to be going away, getting discontinued. And I was like, whoa, that's a, I mean, we we talked about it briefly, but that's kind of a crazy confirmation. So I, I remember looking on Twitter and trying to search for other articles and seeing what I could read about it. And I couldn't find anything else. It was from a Taiwanese news site. Mm -hmm. And it was reported directly by Android Authority, I guess. From the Taiwanese news site. Yeah. So yeah. I saw that and I was like, well, it's not really anywhere else that I would normally read. But I don't know. Android 30, I guess they're pretty, pretty solid. I'll, I'll sort of retweet. I just, I said no in, <laughs> in all lowercase. Like, God, I, I knew this was going to happen eventually, but it was a, small phone. It was a rumor. Yeah. Um, a couple days later, the Asus account like perks up and, and says, no, we're not actually discontinuing any of this stuff. We yeah. have plans for a new Zen phone. We have plans for a new ROG phone. We have plans for more of these phones. Yeah. And so in those couple days of a gap in between the rumor of them discontinuing the Zen phone and the JK were not, uh, I was fully accepting that the Zen phone was gone forever. I had fully accepted it. And you went through the whole grief process? The whole exactly? thing. Yeah. We put up a short that had me using an Android phone and we used the Zen phone in it. And yeah. half the comments were like, wow, that's so that's sad. Too bad. There's not going to be any more of those phones like that. We The whole internet went through that grief and I, then yeah. it was back. I got tagged probably like 50 times in those two days. Just like, you're using this now. What do you think? What mm -hmm. do you think? And I was just sad maybe this will get so them good. press so they'll sell I, more zen phone 10s i mean honestly i feel like this is probably it's good press too because they just released the u.s version yeah. right and True. like you know maybe it wound up being good press so it's not very often that we see like companies directly responding to weird rumors is true. like this yeah yeah so I'm, I'm glad they just came out straight and we're like no, oh, no, no, we're still doing it. I guess the how many times, though, do you see a rumor of a company killing off one of their products that's not true? True. Like, anytime you see Usually a rumor true. of them killing off one of their products and they don't respond, it's probably because they actually killed it yeah. off. Like the big speed speaker or whatever. Yeah. The rumor was that they were collapsing. They were, like, doing a restructuring mm -hmm. at Asus, and so they were just merging the Zenfone and ROG lines, and that mm -hmm. everybody that was working on Zenfone was going to start working on ROG. And yeah. I don't know where that Taiwanese outlet got that information from, but... Me neither. Yeah. But it sounds so realistic that I wouldn't yeah. be shocked if that's actually kind of going to happen. Especially since the Zenfones are small. Yeah. I think I've seen some people talk about like, oh, maybe it's just that it won't be a compact flagship anymore. Maybe the Zenfone name will just be gone, but they're still making something. Mm. Um, I, I feel like at this point, now that people are starting, like people give the Zenfone a lot of credit. I feel like yeah. it won runner up a bunch last year in the smartphone awards. It's only gotten better this year. Phones, yeah. So like cameras. Yeah. Yeah. It's doing it's doing awesome. I, I don't know. Cheap. I still use it. I still use it. And I tried to switch back to my Pixel, and I was like, no, I like this size so much better. I couldn't go back to my Pixel. It is funny. When we were in the grief stages and accepting this on Twitter, <laughs> Austin Evans tweeted, like, it's sad, but it's also not surprising. Like, people vote with their wallets, and oh, as much as we like small phones, like, most people don't buy small phones. So it's it's the most vocal, enthusiastic minority of people who are like, yes, iPhone 12 mini was the perfect size. Yes, Zenfone is great. And then not enough people bought it. It was discontinued. And now yeah. the plus iPhone is in its place and sells just and sells much better. Yeah. And so we wouldn't be shocked if the Zen phone went away, but we still all love yeah. the thing. I think it was believable enough to think maybe it would happen. Yeah. Yeah, man. Phones are way too big now. Like, they, really need a, I re they really need to make small phones. It's funny. You're holding a Pixel Fold, but also like the outside screen of the Pixel Fold Actually, is pretty compact. Mine's taller than it. Yeah. The Zen phone's taller than yeah. the Pixel Fold. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. That yeah, can, happened this Can week. I talk about my Zen phone really quick? Yeah. I've been using this for two months now. Okay. I love it. Okay. Backing of it. Two months still, back. Still still great. I mean, like, there's no wear on this. This is no case climbing, hiking, treating it like crap, and it's nothing like the old ones. Yeah. Now, I have one gripe about this. Okay. And I think this might be very specific, and I'm using this as a call to action to maybe help me. <laughs> <laughs> Wi-Fi calling. It has it, but in the US, I've looked everywhere on how to turn it on, uh -huh. and I cannot figure it out. From everything that I've researched, it seems like in order to have Wi-Fi calling in the US, your carrier has to whitelist the model of phone to allow that feature through the SIM or whatever. Yeah. And because Zenfone's not a very popular, this is my, this is my assumptions here, since Zenfone's not that popular of a phone, T-Mobile doesn't care. 
I use T-Mobile. So my phone model isn't whitelisted in this Wi-Fi calling yeah. thing. So even though I know the phone has it, and even though I know on T-Mobile I've used Wi-Fi calling before, I cannot right now. And in this office, that is very bad because we have crap mm-hmm. service. In this here. is also, you're still using one of the ones we got early, which is an international yes. unit. So I'm wondering if the new one would do anything I different. I think potentially the North America version will have it more likely. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, say. I don't know. Do I like, any carriers sell it? I don't think so. I don't think any no. carriers sell it. I don't see that turning into something. Yeah. From from all the stuff I've looked at, there's all these weird ways you can like plug this set of numbers into the dialer and then it will turn on, allow the feature in the okay. settings. And then every time you restart the phone, you have to dial it in again. <sighs> that didn't even work for me. No. Um, there's nothing in any of the settings. I promise I've looked everywhere. Twitter has helped me. It's not there. Someone from Asus, someone from T-Mobile, if you are listening to this podcast, please, yeah. please, please, please help me figure this out. I had the and same problem. The four other people out there that have the same problem on T-Mobile or something, but um, I would love for it to work because I love this phone. Yeah. And, uh, I remember when I was using it on AT&T, I didn't have wireless calling and or Wi-Fi calling, and that was a pretty big... It's problem. really bad in that corner, like where we sit, is yeah. awful service. And Yeah, for just... those who don't know, in a video production studio, which has concrete floors, concrete ceilings, metal beams everywhere, and double-thick insulated glass for acoustics, yes, yeah, cell signal doesn't really get in there too well, so... Yeah. Yeah, we need Wi-Fi calling. Don't yeah. love us. Yeah. No. It's a thing. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of things, actually, should we take a break? We have oh, this a, last one's quick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is pretty quick. We we did start to keep seeing cyber trucks rolling around on delivery trucks. It, yes, and wrapped as other trucks. That's <laughs> funny. so we're so we're assuming cyber truck deliveries are coming soon. Well, we also have this like kind of Cybertruck event thing coming from the Tesla referral program. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. Where, like, if you pay 30,000 credits, you get an invite to, to the uh, with you plus one first come, first serve to the event. Yeah. Which we just know is in Austin. We don't know. That's literally the first time Tesla's acknowledged this event, right? We all, I believe so. We were all assuming there would be some type of rumored Cybertruck delivery event in Q3, and we've always just stuck with this rumor, but Tesla's never confirmed anything. And the first time we see it officially com- confirmed by Tesla is inside the Tesla app. It's a new referral award mm-hmm. where you can spend points to go to the Tesla Cybertruck delivery event. It does not say what the date is, but it says that it will be an event and you can go. Yeah. And you all travel and accommodations are up to you. This just gets yeah. you into the event. This is just a ticket in. And yeah. whether this is a delivery event for people who pay their credits to go and pick it up or whether it's just for the original people who are going to oh, get no, it in the first place. you won't get your place. truck there. You're not getting your truck. You're just getting a ticket to the event. Okay. Yeah, I, I assume it's going to be, I always look into the future as if it's the past. It'll probably be very similar to the Plaid delivery event where Tesla has this very short event where they go on stage and they say, hey, manufacturing is really hard, but we've got this great product and we're finally starting to manufacture it. Here are the couple of tricks and things we learned in spinning up manufacturing. Here are the first 25. Drive them off in a ceremonial, like, prearranged thing where, like, five happy families, like, get in their new cyber trucks. Did you say and... 25 just because that's what the bed is? No, 25 was what Plaid was. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, I'm assuming it'll be the same. And, yeah, they all, like, you know... Our prearranged California families. I'm sure lots of our Tesla employees already, but then they, this isn't they Texas. sort of ceremony. Oh, Texas this time. So this maybe Texas, Texas yeah. families. Who knows? Uh, and they'll they'll drive off the line, and that'll be the 15 minute event. And if you're there, you got to see it happen. And then there will be 20 YouTube reviews in one week. Yeah, I have a question. How many credits is 30,000 credits besides 30,000? Let me, one over 29,999. Let me just give you some context. Yeah, what's the context uh, of 30,000 credits to be able to go to the event? Because well, I think Andrew and I were talking about this when this first happened. It was like, wow, what an easy way for Tesla to just like get people to burn their credits. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, I get an email every time I refer someone to get a Tesla or any Tesla product. The only so way anytime, you get credits is doing referrals? Yes. So oh. anytime someone uses my code. So I've referred someone... Uh, five days ago to buy a Model 3, and that added 10,000 credits to my account. You so have to you, sell three, three Model 3s three to be able three to go cars. to the event? Yeah. Jeez. Well, wouldn't How that mean, cart- like, only influencers can go? 
Yeah. Right. Honestly, I mean, that's kind of the way it feels, but it's only three, which sounds like a lot. But a lot of people who just have neighbors who are thinking about it or have a friend who got one or whatever, just end up with three. Hmm. And so if you feel like you, uh, you could spend it on anything, you could spend it on jackets and like tires, miles. supercharger miles is another one that Surf a lot of people ports. commonly spend it on. So, yeah, Surf it's ports. a lot of credits. It's Bye. a lot of referrals, but. If you're that much of an enthusiast that you would go to a delivery event where you don't even get your own truck, you probably are pretty into it. Didn't, weren't they like not letting some influencers in to, what was that last event? There was like a huge line and oh, there was yeah. a bunch of people on Twitter who were tweeting that they like got turned around at the entrance. I think like kilowatts oh, got turned around. It was around. the cyber rodeo, right? That was one of those things oh. where no one was actually invited and they just tried to go. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. One person yeah. did get invited, and then they, when they got there, they're like, "Sorry, there's no room" or something like that, and yeah. it was a huge deal. Yeah, I remember that. Huh. Anyway, these these events are always uh, yeah a lot of fun. Okay, well, Question. if it actually happens before the end of the year, then I guess I will lose the bet. Hold on, hold on, let's not go that far. Oh, even though I'm on the opposite side of the bet of you, so I don't know. What you I'm are arguing for you, but oh. does this count as a delivery or a pickup? <laughs> It's a pickup. We said deliveries. <laughs> That's true. It's Wait, a pick- yes, it's, it's both. <laughs> I I think we I think we were on the there will be t- plus twenty five delivered. Uh-huh. Everyone else is not twenty five delivered. But like if I order food. And I have to drive and pick it up. <laughs> That's true. That's not delivery. That's, That's a pickup. This is considered takeout. Yeah, the, the way I tip changes. Takeout. This is takeout. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. cyber truck takeout. <laughs> I'll say two things. <laughs> One. I guess we defined our bet earlier as <laughs> if it was the same as the Plaid event and 25 people receive their truck. Is and we that said how not, we find it? Non-Tesla employees, right? Yes. Okay. Hopefully non-Tesla employees. It? Then it counts. Two, Dude. it is both delivery and pickup because it's a pickup truck. I was going to say, come uh, pick up your truck is what I was just about to say. <laughs> wow. Mark has got to the meme before me. If the trucks get recalled, what's <laughs> what's the grace period? That they have to remain in non-Tesla employees' hands before (laughs) the bet goes back to us. If I get food poisoning from this delivery... (laughs) There are so many ways to define it. It's like, okay, the first 25 roll off the line before the end of the calendar year. And then they deliver another 100,000 in January. But the 25 that were delivered before the end of the year all get recalled. Does it count as not satisfying it? (laughs) Does anyone hear it? (laughs) Technically. I don't know. this, This bet doesn't even have a wager, does it? It doesn't. If a cyber truck explodes in Texas, but nobody's around to hear it, did it ever get delivered at all? I think we should go to break. (laughs) I think we should go to break. It's a chaotic episode already. All right. But yeah, cyber truck. Trivia time. Wow. Trivia time. Oh, trivia truck time. So after the break, we do want to talk about the nothing smartwatch. We do want to talk about PlayStation Portable making no type of sense. So there's a lot more to get to. But first, the trivia. Trivia. Okay, Did, hey, dude. I'm excited. Um, you guys were showing this trivia question to like everyone in the office, so I'm very excited. And everyone right. said, "No way!" <laughs> yeah. I really? cannot wait for you guys to hear it. Okay. Although, is it this one or the next one? It's this one, okay. but Ellis also came out with a great one. But Loki, I feel like you might know this. I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. All right. So, fun fact: according to Asus, the Asus name is actually a reference to what Greek mythological creature? Oh, I already know this. Ah, see, I had a feeling. I did a tour at the ASUS headquarters in Taiwan. Greek mythological. I just did my Lions. research, okay? <laughs> I went to Taiwan to find this answer <laughs> out. ASUS. 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 <laughs> Greek god? Asus. Greek what? Greek, it's mythological, it's Greek creature. mythological creature? Greek mythological It's going to make a lot of sense. Can you, you name one me. other Greek mythological creature? The Chimera. Zeus. Oh. Zeus. I don't know if that's true. Zeus. Or not. So, like the Loch Ness monster. A Zeus. A Zeus. A Zeus. <laughs> a Zeus? <laughs> the Loch Ness monster. You mean like a really big bee? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, welcome back. We are going to talk about nothing sort of leaking something, but it's not really nothing. It's Have you seen they've announced a sub-brand called CMF? Why are they doing this? Can I just, can I just take a second? These guys. 
they have like, like a brand new company. There's yeah. like two products. <laughs> I know. They have like two products. They're like three. S- spinning up. Hey, the parentheses, two products. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, they also have the bugs all over the ad. <laughs> You know, I don't know. Just they they made a new sub brand, yeah, called CMF, mm-hmm. which it, is a weird name already. Are they trying to Color. get clever? That actually okay. CMF it, normally in like hardware lingo terms design, stands for color yeah. material finish. If you're if you're talking about a new device and someone says, "Tell me about the CMF," or if they're just talking about some design process, CMF is color material and finish. That is what this stands for as well. Uh, nothing products usually being clear. <laughs> is a pretty key thing to note here. So CMF being clear, plastic, (laughs) glossy (laughs) for everything that they make. Damn. Uh, Well, not that CMF makes, though. But what is CMF? CMF is going to make what? A smartwatch. Is that the plan? So so there was a a leak that has three products. It's a 65-watt charger, Okay. a pair of earbuds, and a smartwatch. Uh, That's what this leak is. That they're calling the Watch Pro. The Watch Pro. That looks just like an Apple Watch Ultra. It looks exactly like the uh, renders we all were getting before the Watch Ultra came out when it was called the Watch Pro, which is just like a... Square. Yes, like flat-edged, square, rounded corners. Oh, Yeah, yeah. Does this not look like the old renders for the Apple Watch Ultra before it was confirmed? Yeah. And it just has an orange band? It also kind of looks like my new Casio. It does. Yeah. Why is that it? Is that the CMF? (laughs) Blur that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. So there's uh, some leaks about these couple new things they're doing. Um, Apparently, Carl says that CMF is going to be a a separate team that is going to be focused on clean design for these new products. Um, They will be. It seems like they're going to be cheaper (laughs) than their products right now. Mm-hmm. Um, making better design more accessible is their goal. That was supposed to be the goal of nothing. Yeah, isn't that what <laughs> that was the entire point? Also, the CMF logo looks like it says CMT. Nice. Just saying. Okay. Kind of weird. I like that. Um, but yeah, this this watch looks like the render of the Apple Watch Ultra before we knew what it actually was going to look like. Even more basic. It just looks like a square like iPhone with a like nothing watch face yeah. on it. Squirkle. A um, couple specs, apparently, from this. 1.96 AMOLED display, 600 nits peak brightness, 50 hertz refresh rate. Software claims to have 100 watch faces and 100 workouts to that it can track. Heart rate, blood oxygen sensors. Battery that lasts up to 13 days when always on display is turned off. Will not run Wear OS. F- price point is apparently 4,500 rupees, which if you convert that is around 55 USD. That's crazy. Mm. That's concerning, I think. <laughs> yeah. That's like, yeah, that's really. There, there's a certain point in things that are like, uh, we can mostly tech, but plastic? this goes all over the place. Is like price points. We like things that are cheap, but there's a point that's so cheap that you just wonder if You're it's like, bad. how it's in the like, world is this? Exactly. Yeah. This seems like when you would go on Amazon and search for smartwatch, the first result that would come up is like, <laughs> C- CMF smartwatch 13 day battery life IP67 <laughs> Bluetooth, Bluetooth Wi-Fi 100 workouts Dude, tell me that when I go on Amazon and search for smartwatch the $35 product doesn't look exactly yeah. like this it's kind of just hue that to those orange all have, $35 those all have the same probably 600 nits display 100 workouts 100 track. sport modes yep see wait a second see? wait is he like is Carl soldier boying us right now <laughs> <laughs> the Soldier watch the pay watch. A hundred sport modes. That's exactly what CMF was saying. Interesting. That's, okay, oh but my. in their defense, the Pebble smartwatch was ninety nine dollars, like ten years ago, and that thing yeah. was awesome. It was, but it didn't have a s- real screen. It had wasn't that just um, e- sort of e ink? Yeah, but it's also been like ten years. It's true. So hmm. if it's slightly better with this a is, real screen, I could see how they could get to that price. This point. is five stars with a hundred one thousand ninety three ratings. I feel like I see what's going on, which is <laughs> nothing. Yeah. The the brand nothing, I think, wants to always have clear products. But Carl wants to also be able to sell other products that orange. aren't clear. And they're orange. Because all of these leaks are orange. Maybe orange is the color they picked. But CMF is their way of indicating this one's not clear. 
It's and not, so that allows them to sell earbuds that aren't clear. And of course, when you make it clear, you have to spend more money to like do the extra design work and like decide where to put the glue and how to organize the cables and make it look good clear, right? So these are not going to be as expensive as the clear nothing stuff. Nothing becomes a more premium des designator. And CMF is just this stuff that's not clear. You're right. So it's not be... clear why they're doing this. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, there could be a there could be a nothing smartwatch later, but I would expect that one to yeah. be clear. Okay, I, I, have, guess. I have two theories. Okay. Okay. One is that do you remember like last year or the year before when literally everyone started making wireless earbuds? Mm -hmm. And it's just because they have like the highest margins of any product that you can make. Making wireless earbuds is insanely cheap and because they are individually individual people lose individual ones all the time and just buy cheap ones on amazon and uh qualcomm and a few other other major chip companies essentially put out socs that yeah they're make, off the shelf yeah like yeah you pretty much just have to design a plastic yeah. injection mold like i have plenty of friends who like lose their earbuds they go on amazon they literally just search wireless earbuds buy them and that's it mm -hmm. and so i think probably what they're thinking is like we should just make <clears throat> this like ultra te cheap tech that has really high margins that could like help lift up nothing because they had to up the price of the nothing ear one because they said the margins were too low right? one because they had to slide the other and that <laughs> your sticks in at the 99 yeah, they had to make range. them cheaper um the other thing is sort of the comparative analysis that i think we've done videos on before where it's like if you have something that's worse you can position nothing the brand as being the premium brand even right. though nothing's original point was to be the affordable brand now they can make them seem more premium and they mm -hmm. slowly slide the price up and so you sort of you you turn the cheap one into the the cash cow i guess in a way that can prop up the rest of the business so you can do lower margin more interesting stuff with nothing but you still sell a below to cheap earbuds yeah. it is weird though because there's only one competing product between the two which is the earbuds mm -hmm. and if this says it's going to be like making making better design more accessible i would assume that either these are cheaper than nothing or they're saying nothing's designed as and this is better. <laughs> I assume the so, word accessible just means cheaper. Yeah, yeah. So like yeah. we're we're assuming then these are going to be cheaper. So nothing ear sticks are ninety nine, but these are called Buds Pro. So maybe these could be ninety nine, but they're better and then cheaper than the ear twos. And I am a little confused here, but there is only one product that's actually like directly comparable which is earbuds because the smartwatch nothing doesn't have and the charger nothing doesn't have yeah but nothing has phones and cm f doesn't have right i keep reading cmt yet. whenever i look at it yet yet you think they're going to do a phone eventually uh, it could it just wouldn't be clear <laughs> we'll see it's not clear whether they're not going to do <laughs> it's a phone. phone watch out oh, God. <laughs> so yeah but i don't know 55 dollars for a smartwatch i think that runs to the point where i'm getting very skeptical yeah, I mean, I think the ideal comparison is going to be other thirty to sixty dollars smartwatches, and if it can compete with those, then that's just where you want to be. You get lots of Amazon reviews, you get lots of people just searching smartwatch on Google and grabbing the one that looks like it's the most interesting. You get it in shelves yeah. and Best Buy and all that stuff. Like that's all you really got to do. I get people searching for wireless earbuds. It's just wireless earbuds on Amazon, but just searching smartwatch on Amazon. Which I just—I have a hard time believing that <laughs> there's thirty dollars smart. I know, but I just such a hard time believing people look for that because when I you feel click like... on it, does it say it's like number four in like smartwatches or whatever? Uh, oh, uh, let me see. Because then you can see what the number one selling smartwatch is, and I almost guarantee it's Three, under a hundred bucks. Three thousand people have bought the top result in the last month. The only thing I worry about that is like last Amazon month. gaming things though, and and doing like giving things away for free and counting as verified sales. There's a lot of weird ways you can game the system hmm. even a maze fit smartwatches are as low as like that, what is that one's 15 dollars <laughs> how is there a, a margin on that i i you can't even buy a watch band for 15 dollars. i feel like <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't know just apple watch bands are a hundred dollars in the smartwatch Jeez. view i feel like there's so many people who don't think of things wow. as just smartwatches they think them as fitbits or they think of them as apple watches like they just know the name of it and they're searching those names so I, I'm yeah. so confused. But if you out there are using an Amazon smartwatch, an insanely cheap, let one. us know. Please let us know. I would love to hear how it actually works. We bought the number one selling one once and opened it. And we're like, this doesn't look bad, and then just never thought about it ever again. <laughs> the yeah. smartwatch. 
Yeah, we bought one a while ago because we wanted to do a video on it, mm. and I just don't think we ever had, did. Had a hard time getting myself to care, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Something about that thing. This one's $30. I'll be interested to see how this CMF stuff goes through. I mean, it looks nice. Like, listen, it looks good. I always thought the Apple Watch Ultra pre-renders looked good. It mm -hmm. looks like an iPhone. It's got 100 <laughs> workouts. All right, so <laughs> that's the that's the watch. I don't have really much else to say about that. No. Um, we should talk though about this this PlayStation thing though that mm -hmm. happened. Now was this last week or the week before? Last week. This is last week also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess summary: PlayStation Portable Portal Portal PlayStation Portal because PSP is PlayStation Portable. Sorry, I think yeah. I, I just wrote it as the portable oh, PlayStation oh, yeah. thing. That's my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's called the PlayStation Portal. It was announced uh, last week, and basically, if you haven't seen the thing, what it is is actually kind of interesting. It's a DualShock controller split in half with an eight-inch screen in the middle. It's exactly what a 17-year-old would have photoshopped when they're like, what if I had a PlayStation controller and a Switch in the middle? Yeah. It looks and it's, exactly the same. It's kind of <laughs> What sick. if my Joy-Cons were a PlayStation controller? <laughs> but the DualShock <laughs> controller is really nice. It so is. Really is nice. Like, it still yeah. has all the haptics and all that. The battery life's not amazing, but okay. You have the DualShock controller wherever you want, and you have the screen, so now you don't have to be in front of a TV. I can be on the couch. I can be in the basement, I can be under the covers in my room playing video games and no one can tell because I got it in my lap. It's an eight inch screen. The bathroom. Wherever, yeah, <laughs> exactly, in the bathroom, wherever. Yeah, <laughs> so so you've got that, you've got a $200 price tag and so all of us saw this and thought, well, that's actually really intriguing. Like I, I like the PS5, I, I play games on the PS5. I wonder if I would want to get one of these things. Then you learn the details of like how it works, what it does, what it doesn't do, right? First of all, it is a remote play device. Basically, what you need to know about what that means is it's not really doing a lot of much of any actual processing on the device. What's happening is you need to also have a PS5, and that PS5 needs to be on and connected to the internet. And your PlayStation Portal, while it's also on and connected to the internet, will then use your PlayStation 5's compute processing to show the games on your little display in your hands. So it's this eight inch. I think it's 1080p, 60 hertz. Mm -hmm. It's cheap. It's just like bring the game from the TV to another room in your own house, basically. I mean, I assume you can play on Wi-Fi somewhere else, but then you start to deal with latency and like how good is the internet connection wherever you're at. So Yeah, I think we confirmed that. I think uh, Judner did a video on doing it, but he, he wasn't did. able to test it and like... He said he asked them about using it on Wi-Fi somewhere else, and they said, sure, but it, like, depends on your connection. Yeah. So that's, yeah. like, I'm sure you can get great connections somewhere, but I mean, that's never something I look forward this to. This is the world yeah. of cloud gaming. Mm -hmm. Like, you've seen what it's like to just stream a YouTube video. Imagine streaming a 1080p YouTube video with live low-latency controls and all yeah. that other stuff. Like, it's it's not going to be as good as playing on your couch, but yeah. sure, whatever. You what? take the game with you. Yeah. I thought you it does. it's not compatible with PlayStation Cloud. It's not compatible with not, PlayStation not right. Cloud, but you can connect via Wi-Fi to your your, your PlayStation. Your still PlayStation. has to be turned on at home. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you can make the link to your. But but it's never streaming a game from the internet. It's always streaming no. it from. It's not from like local Stadia. It's not like Stadia. Yeah. Okay. From your PS5, yeah, they don't have data centers that are like streaming yeah. the games to you. It's oh just no, going this is over. the first of so many questions I have about this thing. Don't <laughs> yeah. even worry. Yeah. So you you need a PlayStation Five is is yeah. the baseline thing. Yeah. Uh, you need a good internet connection, and then the compute from your PlayStation 5 is what's being shown on the handheld controller. Yeah. That's number one. So, okay, fine. 200 bucks. I'm not shocked by that. I think that's not the craziest thing. I was shocked um, already. <laughs> I was shocked. It's not as interesting anymore, but it is not a shock to me at that price, I guess I could say it that way. Um, but then some other weird things started to pop up. Uh, do, the mainly... do you want to do the worst one? The headphone one is the, like, Bluetooth. the Bluetooth. The Bluetooth is okay. Nice. The worst one is that this does not support Bluetooth and instead uses a protocol that only two pairs of Sony earbuds and headphones use. Not even their existing headphones have this protocol. They just released two new pairs of earbuds and headphones that have the protocol. So those are the only things that you can listen to audio through it with unless you use the headphone jack. Yeah. yeah. So it has a headphone jack. No Great. Bluetooth. But if you want to connect wireless headphones to your PlayStation Portal, 
you can't just go in Bluetooth settings and connect your Sony Mark Fives, even though Sony makes them. Uh, you would. Need, what's the protocol called? I want to. Okay, look it it's, up. I'm so mad about this. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm so <laughs> mad. He's like, it's called like PlayStation. You're break it's the called PlayStation Link. Link. It's called PlayStation Link, and it's so confusing. A because there was already a Sony thing called PlayStation Link that was. Different. I thought so. And B, yeah. it's like when it first, you know, Sony loves proprietary audio codecs, so I assumed that they had just made like a super low latency one for gamers. But that's not that's not what they did. <laughs> Wait, it's that, not? No, it, it it's a it's like that would mean they were like using Bluetooth to encode, or they were transmitting over Bluetooth and encoding doubling the frequency or whatever. As right? far as no one's like used the words Wi-Fi Direct, but as far as I can tell, is that oh. this is a Wi-Fi Direct based mm. thing? Oh, okay. Um, because they eventually want it to be like high, way higher bandwidth, way high, higher bandwidth, lower latency, and better multi-device networking. I, so sure, in theory, but why? Because I think what they're going for eventually is you'll be able to seamlessly move from your PlayStation to the to, to this thing. to your Lit. Sony laptop to your exp- like I think or they're going to roll it out just from the everything. portable to your console is yeah. probably the most. They say Mac and PC are going to get it eventually, and that was the other thing because if it's not Wi-Fi Direct, I don't know how they would just assume that Macs and PCs could just start transmitting this new like wireless <laughs> kind of invention. They. Well, it's got to use an existing nowhere. an existing thing with just a modified protocol. Not necessarily. Sony is definitely capable of. Yeah, but of, Apple is never going to just start no, ex- supporting. Well, yeah, this. exactly. So anyway, yeah. yeah, that's that's my rant. But yeah, they've just gone and done something crazy. Even I worse. Think, even worse. Earbuds are two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, two hundred dollars. They look like they hang like two inches out of your ear. They look gigantic. <laughs> They're pretty big. They cost the same as the this. Would all be okay? As the console. <laughs> this would all be okay if it was an option, but it isn't. It's the only thing. Like if it had Bluetooth, and then yes. also, yeah. oh, if you want low latency, yeah, yeah, we've yeah. got this mm-hmm. special super thing where end. we can give you these high end earbuds, and it'll work, and it's the same price as the handheld. But hey, you want the super low and latency? That's sure. reasonable. I like. I do th- like low latency in wireless earbuds when playing games is one thousand percent a problem. Like yeah. I totally get that, but like there. Stardew Valley, you don't need low latency <laughs> or something. Hey, like, hey, hey, hey. I, I'm hey. just saying, man, you're fine with that milli- couple millisecond delay yeah. there. Yeah. Astro's player. But it's just so funny because the earbuds are $200. The console is, the, it's not even a console, the handheld is $200. <laughs> the handheld. And you can't do anything unless you also have a PS5, which is yeah. like, what, $400, $500? Can we pour one out for all the kids this this Christmas oh, who are going to get? I was just going to say that. The they, worst thing. They're going to get a PlayStation Portable. Like, oh, I know, Timmy, we've really wanted to get you a PlayStation, but it's been impossible for all these years, but we finally got you one. It's the PlayStation it's Portal. One. Look, you can take it on the car ride. You can take it on the car ride. <laughs> Dude, all the, all the kids who think they're going to be able to play their games in the car, and they're like, why well, want to turn on? But it's not all the, it says the apps can't load. That <laughs> happened to me once. My parents got me the guitar for Guitar Hero, but not the oh. game. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> so for Epic. a whole year, I was waiting for the game that they promised they would get me. Oh I never my God. got it. That's, That's amazing. I just had a guitar. Yeah. But yeah. There so many poor kids are going to get this. This and will happen to a non zero number of people. Yeah. We've for been sure. trying to think of like the scenarios of when this makes the most sense. And it feels like it stems down to. You're sharing the TV with people in your family and you want to just like play on the couch while someone else is watching something. That's literally yeah. perfect. You, that's like the main reason. Yeah. You know, you just can't stop that Sigma grind set of <laughs> just your games. So like when you're cooking or going to the bathroom or walking around the house, you need to make sure you're just grinding away the entire time. But like the PS5 is not portable. So you've got one TV in your house and you've got a PS5, but someone else is watching the game. So you want to still play on the PS5. So you just take the PlayStation portal and... And take it to another room, and you can still play PS5. But you can already do that with the remote play, just like on an on your phone or something. Yeah, I mean, this is like a nice dedicated DualShock eight inch screen experience yeah. that you know hopefully is like a nice playing experience could, for two hundred bucks. Could know. games like incorporate it? It like so you could use both the TV and then like the Wii U. That's like what I've been Wii. calling yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. This the feels PU. like the Wii U can should the P. The, the most <laughs> successful Nintendo product. <laughs> I will say <laughs> you can turn on your PS5 remotely with the controller. Yeah. So even if you're like if you're like staying somewhere else, I don't have really good that. Wi-Fi. You can turn on the PS5 from the other okay. place with yeah. it. You could be across. That the was so, like, so funny. If, if you're in, a, if you were going like, going on a trip and you 
are going to be in the hotel and you just like want to bring it with you and you want to play your PS5 at the hotel, it's $200. It's like, yeah, maybe. But it's definitely like a luxury accessory that has a lot of limitations that's going to confuse a lot of parents. I want to know the hotels you're staying at that yeah, have good enough yeah. Wi-Fi to well, do this. Yeah. <laughs> I am very curious about the um, latency because when Stadia mm-hmm. first launched, um, I was like, testing it before it came out and it was like fine for like five minutes and then it would just get awful for five minutes and then fine for five minutes and awful for five minutes and Mm -hmm. it was just yeah it's like trying to watch a youtube video in high quality when you have a garbage internet connection it sort of cycles between crystal clear and then like 140p (laughs) while it catches up and then it's crystal clear for five seconds again and then it's 140p while it catches up it's kind of like that yeah yeah so do you guys remember back in the day back in OG included an iPhone YouTube app, the the TV. Yeah. Be- it, in the day before it would like in back in the days when it would buffer an entire video um, as soon as you loaded it. Did you have the spot on your phone where you knew if the buffering made it past there? It <laughs> yeah. was like probably good all yeah. the way through the video. I yeah, was an yeah. expert at that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really good at that. Yeah. The one the little like nick on the side of your phone. You're I like, forgot that's up to there. I forgot it would load a whole slide. video and you would just yeah. wait for it. Yeah. It doesn't do that anymore. That's yeah, I also want to note um oh yeah. I also want to note that it's kind of funny that they're just now releasing like a streaming device when we kind of went through this like handheld streaming device thing like two years ago and then last year with like there's the Razer one and then there was like an, there's someone it's a else. bunch now. But now mm-hmm. the thing that's been happening this year is dedicated console computers like the Steam Deck. With like, real compute. Like the Asus one. And like Windows. Yeah. Yeah. Like real compute power in them. And those are getting more and more popular. And then they release this and it's like, uh, <laughs> it feels you know. like I really wonder, cause like as much as we all understand this is an almost pointless product, I wonder how many like normal normies will see this and be like, oh yeah, I'd get that. Yeah, Like for 200 bucks, so I'd be able to play anywhere possible. in my house. Like it's I think, very possible. I think kids who are still living in their parents' house and have siblings and stuff where the PlayStation's connected on the biggest TV, which is also the TV in the family room that people also want to watch yeah. games or other shows or movies on and you just want to play games. Yeah. This is this actually makes yeah. perfect sense. It's just such a shame because so many people remember like the Vita and stuff like that yeah. and like or want some sort of cloud streaming service like handheld. This isn't that yeah. and is really disappointing yeah. and I the entire say. steam deck community is also like yeah. this thing is a joke <laughs> yeah i mean i will say when i was a kid and i would like playing on my gamecube and then my dad would come home from work and he'd put the news on and i'd be like oh, i have to stop playing if only i had a gamecube portal well so when the switch came out that was like the coolest thing to me i was like i could be playing on the tv and then oh, yeah. i could just grab the switch off the dock and keep playing yep so i mean and it, the switch is a smash hit that's true makes you think <laughs> so there, there is something to it but i would like to see how the sales are and how it goes but we'll keep an eye on it we'll keep an eye on it we'll continue to hate on it but we'll keep an eye on it (laughs) (laughs) uh we do want to take one more quick trivia break we also after the break we'll have to talk about uh the Fortnite map of our entire studio which was absolutely incredible pretty fun um and also google shockingly leaking something it doesn't happen often but we'll talk about they leaked a leak and a leak weird wow weird they get ahead of themselves sometimes um but before that Let's do one more trivia question. Preferably one that we all know. (laughs) Preferably one that I know. So I'm thinking about buying a new TV, shopping around, and I've come to the conclusion that TV prices are are literally random. Like like the, <laughs> like the the people upstairs are rolling dice and coming up with TV prices based on that. So I went to bestbuy.com and I got the prices of all 99 55-inch televisions sold at Best Buy. Um, and so I have all that data in front of me. We can do all sorts of things with it. But I think the most fun is price is right rules. This question's worth two points. Mm. What is the most expensive 55 inch tv sold at best buy price what is the least expensive Two 55 questions. inch tv prices right rolls. sold at best buy shout out to bobby Two point, two points each or one point each. Okay. Two points so total. Closest prices. without going over and prices without going under both over closest both over both over okay yeah all right huh 
Is nerd. it 4K or just 55? Just 55. Every 55 inch TV is going to be Buy some offers. garbage 55 inch TVs <laughs> on Best Buy, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> Noted. I'm going to think about that one for a little bit. All right. And we'll indulge in the stats later. Be right back. Yeah. All right, welcome back. Uh, I just want you guys to know, if you were ever wondering what it looks like to be seven inches tall <laughs> and run around our studio, you can do it now uh, in Fortnite. So that's something I got to do recently. So this company, do you want to explain what happened? We They just like made everything. Yeah, I thought this was like a pretty cool example of just, if we have a studio video on it and there's also yeah. a video made by the people who created the map on how they made it. Both are awesome. We'll put both in the, the show notes. But um, this company reached out to us and I think this is a perfect example of how to properly reach out to a company that you want to work with because rather than just DMing us and, or emailing us and saying, hey, we have this idea. We want to make the studio inside of Fortnite. How can we do it? They emailed us and said, here's a 10 minute video of your studio in Fortnite night that we did all of the work with. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like. If you're interested, reply. Yeah. And it was this crazy video that I kind of hid from all of you guys until I could talk with them and figure out how to play it. Yeah. And then we got your guys, all of your reactions in a video and it was, it was really fun. But they made the fort, the whole studio, a playable map inside of Fortnite that you can now, depending on with an island code, go and play for free, yep. which is wild. And they did made the whole thing by themselves gave it over to us so that we could launch it with Epic because they have this new creator economy, which is really cool and, and customizable maps. But it's out there. You can play it. So I don't play Fortnite. When what? I did, when no I way. did actually play it, I was like, this seems like a really good Fortnite map. Like our studio is broken down into different rooms and then every room has like all kinds of stuff in it. And like mm -hmm. there's all kinds of places to hide stuff. So... And we didn't. I didn't really do any of the like building stuff that happens in Fortnite. I was just like running around looking. at I don't stuff. think there is building in this map. Oh, okay. I think so it's like better. it's it's right now set up as team deathmatch. So you just go around and there's guns and, and like there's a lot of cool mobility items. So there's like a grappling hook. There's a dirt bike That's hidden somewhere. Called. By mobility the way, items. yeah, mobility items. Yeah. So you can jump around because our our studio has lots of different levels when you're seven inches tall. Mm -hmm. um, so you're basically like a mouse, or as Mariah said, a rat <laughs> running around like on yeah. the floor. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's super fun. I played it a bunch. It seems, I heard we just got featured as like one of the best new UEFN maps. So Ooh. I guess way more people are playing it, which is really cool. I'll have to nice. try again. But yeah. um, we should have like a night one night where we all play. But it's really cool and crazy detailed. And the podcast room we're sitting in right now is in it. Like very meticulously made, including our acoustic panels Dude, and everything. it's scary accurate, some of the stuff in there. It like, is. I, I ran around looking at stuff and I... Obviously, they got a lot of interesting, fun details like, oh, the shades are uneven or, oh, the carpet ends here and here's where the cement floor starts. But like the orientation of the lights and like where all of our chairs are, the like HVAC the units. HVAC, you can go up into the HVAC mm -hmm. and look down from it. Like you can go into the pool table, like all these crazy Easter eggs. It's pretty sick. You should go watch it and yep. play it if you play. Yeah, it was a company called Based AF. Um, they're from the Netherlands, so it's not like they even were like around here looking they somehow did all of this from across the sea and that we know of that we know of it's very fair i don't believe they've been in here there are people actually concerned for our safety <laughs> in that video because of how accurate it was but uh bit, yeah we were okay okay they did it through some other ways i guess through our whole studio is on the internet like a thousand yeah, times yeah. you can piece Watch it together you just have to put in a lot 4K. of work into it yeah in 4k but yeah it was really cool go give it a try I've found that our studio tours have become increasingly useful, surprisingly, in other things that we do. Like some photography team came here the other day and they were like scouting locations. They were like, we're going to, we want to take some pictures and it's going to be really cool. We want to stage something up. And actually we watched your whole studio tour online. So we had some ideas based on what we saw. We'd like to shoot here and here. I was like, oh, great. So yeah, this is, this has happened before. This is actually pretty sick that people get to use that stuff. So shout out to the studio tours. Yeah. Uh, last thing we want to mention and talk about is Google accidentally leaking something uh if you didn't catch the sarcasm in my voice it's because uh i'm not good at it but google <laughs> leaks stuff all the time uh mostly in the world of pixel this one was the pixel 8 mm -hmm. 
uh, leaked in an image on their website, and it's just a guy holding up the Pixel 8 on the phone, and I guess on his wrist is what looks like a slightly different smartwatch. We're not sure if that's the Pixel Watch or a new Pixel Watch or whatever, yeah, but we're it's the end of the pod- Pixel Watch, but it's, I don't know if it's a Pixel Watch 2. We're, yeah. we're in pure speculation phase here. I yeah. think this got posted. I think David might have posted it, and then Alex was just like, is that possibly a Pixel Watch leak too? Hard yeah. to tell. And then we looked at it. I guess The Verge made an article, and then after they made that, everyone commented that, so they made another article about yeah. it possibly being it. But yeah, this watch looks... A little different. It could be lighting. It could be angles. Yeah. But but it's definitely a Pixel 8. Yeah. It's definitely, definitely a Pixel definitely 8. 1,000%. Like, I like yeah. how it looks. Well, really we looks... know what the Pixel 8 looks like. I know, We've seen it a hundred times. Like it. There's like a slightly In different real camera cutout around. It's And the, the bar flash, is still yeah. there, but the flash yeah. and the camera cutouts look a little different. But it's still got the Pixel bar. It still yeah. looks like a Pixel. It's mm-hmm. got the, uh, you know, the, the thermometer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that... No, <laughs> Do you know that thermometer leak that about it that went through yeah you can, like take your temperature if you put it up to your head where exactly three years after this would have been useful you kind of can just sort of <laughs> wrap it around your forehead and get a general sense of your temperature. you can still get sick that's true <laughs> that's, that's you know still what? a thing that's out true. there <laughs> but is that enough for you to buy a phone with that as a primary new feature over the previous if you're year? picking the pixel 8 because you like taking your temperature a lot <laughs> i can't stop you yeah the good f- i'm ha- i'm happy that feature is available in the stop world you. now that really Honestly. feels like it feels like a nexus feature like nexus phones used to do weird stuff like that yeah yeah i mean honestly what i'm most hoping for out of pixel 8 is like basic stuff like tensor g3 mm-hmm. to be good and efficient and fast like that's most of what i want for the new pixel probably won't happen yet because i think that g4 is when they go to tsmc oh no so it's yeah i think it's samsung again i do think it's a node shrink i need to double check that That, that's good maybe like four like i think mm, five mm, nanometer let me check oh (laughs) well while you check that yeah this watch in this picture the reason it kind of looks maybe like a new one is it seems like it's less rounded and bubbly on top and then it also looks like the digital crown has is digital crown an official apple it is term an apple term yeah the um you did what i did i said app store and you got mad at me but digital crown. i didn't get mad apple. i got mad at myself oh, um yeah <laughs> the, the regular cr- crown what's it called it's just called a crown just a crown a dial crown yeah it looks like it's colored so like oh, cool. uh, it, right it kind of looks white there in that photo right again could be lighting but hey the pixel watch design a little flatter a little less bezel cool accent on the crown Will I keep trying to pair to you hey, from across the listen, room? Listen, I was thinking that <laughs> the best part about using my Zen phone is that Mariah's Pixel Watch doesn't try to connect to it every time I walk past her anymore. Um, but that would be nice, along with a lot of other things about it, yeah. like battery life. But but you can't see that in the, the leak of a leak. Can't tell. I don't know how they could make the Pixel Watch thinner. That seems really? like the last thing I'd want. Pixel well, Watch is, well, because of the battery life. Yeah. And then you don't want... pretty thin and has a pretty... I guess it is Sub-part small battery. already. Yeah. This, oh, but it looks flatter in that picture, no? It does. Yeah. I think we'll less see. rounded would may, maybe make it less like prone to just getting destroyed on the, the sides of it. Also true. Ooh. Any luck? Uh, it says that TSMC is in 2025. Mm. All right. Yeah, with Tensor G5. So It's just... F- we're just hitting G3 right now. Yeah, the Pixel Tensor G2 in the Pixel Fold is, I can say it is smooth, but it is not efficient. Mm -hmm. And I would really like it to be smooth and efficient. Also, the modem is very power hungry and not great. Yeah, so the battery life is not great. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We shall see. We sound so excited. We shall see. <laughs> I can't wait. This is a, this is only halfway to the normal Pixel leak, which is like, it went on sale and somebody bought one in a Best Buy and it's yeah. not actually and supposed a, to be out yet. And a full unboxing is on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's reviews on YouTube already. The there's still already. Time. There's still time. Selling them on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all that being said, I think that's it for this week. I'm sure next week will be just as jam-packed. We got a lot more to get into some really good videos coming up by the time you watch this there's a there's a really good one that's hopefully live we'll see i'm working on it now so shout out to future me editing that uh, but i think we should oh, get into say shout out to future me adam edits yeah. these podcasts you're no, not I'm gonna see that video. later i'm okay. editing the video that will go live around the time the podcast goes live so shout out to future me editing it while this gets edited okay. so that they both come out at the same time that would be that would be Sh- sick shout out to future me eating dinner tonight nice Trivia time. You're right. Shout out to future David eating dinner tonight. (laughs) Thanks. 
I can't find it anywhere in Google's documentation where they ever refer to it as anything. The what? crown? The crown. They don't even use the word crown. They don't use the word knob. I can't I can't even find a reference to the fact that it's on the watch. Watch dot pixel. I know. Maybe it's button. not. That's hmm. what I, anyway, did you check the manual? Twisty button? I, it doesn't seem like they have a manual. It seems like they just have a help center. Does the Pixel Watch exist? Mm. <laughs> Barely. If there's a Pixel Watch for sale, but nobody buys I it, was just, it. <laughs> Damn it, my jokes keep getting stolen. Anyway, <laughs> trivia question number one. Okay, Asus, here we go. Oh, but actually, first, quick update on the score. Oh, Marquez man. with five. Andrew with one. <laughs> carry the one. Nope, just two. Just two. Just two. Oh, just David two. with six. All right. First question. According to Asus, the Asus name is actually a reference to what Greek mythological creature? When you guys see the answer, you're going to be like, oh my God. I really hope you I, got this wrong, David. <laughs> I, right before you said that, I had an idea and. I, think, feel I, I, think, I feel very confident oh, about it now. Marquez is the only one. How do you one feel, Marquez? Left in the dark. I don't know. I don't know. You say mythological creature is a weird way of saying that, which <laughs> makes me think I'm wrong. But <laughs> you're making me think I'm going to get this wrong, Adam, and then I'm going to feel awful. I, oh, all right. Flip him and read. What do we got? Yes. Oh, you're right. I knew. Uh, uh, wait, yeah. Marquez is it? Okay, David I and I both that. put Pegasus. Yeah. Pegasus. 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 I, I like how they're that. like, it means it's like Pegasus, but let's just say it no, differently no, no, no. too. That's yeah. not what happened. Oh, okay. They used to be called Pegasus and then they got split into two companies. Wait, yeah, what was the other company called? Pegatron. Pegatron. Oh. Pegatron. Pe- <laughs> that's. <laughs> Why is that funny? That's so much worse. Than- <laughs> Wait, what? How does that have. Wait, where'd <laughs> Asus come from? <laughs> I thought so you said it was part Pegasus of it. Pegasus and they got Asus and Pegatron. <laughs> Wait, I think so. Pegatron no, is after? not. You're lying. That's hilarious. Yeah. It was called Pegasus. Wait, okay. And then they named it Pegatron yeah, and Pegatron. Asus. Hold on a sec. I'm no, not no. as bothered by the Asus as I am. But... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Marquez, what did you put? I wrote Asus. Because great pun though. Wouldn't that great have been? pun? I love that. Incredible. Answer. That's not a creature though. <laughs> I, that's why I'm yeah. wrong. That's why I'm wrong. It's funny because Ellis and I were talking about this. We were wondering if I should call it a creature or a character, because there's uh, only one Pegasus. Huh. Yeah. It's not like a, a it's horse. Still a creature, right? Yes, but it's also a character. Mm. So I don't know. I thought creature would be like a little bit. Of well, a but that's are there other flying horned? Horses just the one. that are not called Pegasus. Nope. Okay. They do have a brother, but it's not a horse. Whoa. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, let's talk about TVs. Best Buy TVs. Best Buy 55 inch TVs. Right. What is the cheapest one they sell, and what is the most expensive one they sell? I'm not asking for models. I'm asking for prices. And um, uh, oh. this is does, oh, this does Sorry. not include Magnolia uh. products. That it's Best Buy's brand. That's Best um, Buy's like uh, super high end. And remember, these televisions are 55 inches. Halfway there. And it's close without going over. I might have been wrong. They might have started as Asus and then spun off Pegatron. That's what I found. Yeah, I think that's what actually happened. All right, guys. That's fine. Let's start with most expensive. Oh, I just wrote both. That's fine. Okay. Same. Okay. So but we all did. For most expensive, I put thirty two hundred dollars. All right. I put twenty two ninety nine. All right. I put forty four ninety nine. Marquez takes this one. The so most expensive fifty five inch TV sold at Best Buy costs eight thousand dollars. <laughs> Hello, Ellis Roven here. Uh, yesterday, while doing this trivia question, I turned on the stupidest part of my brain and somehow totally missed that this $7,000 TV is, uh, it's a mirror. It's expensive because it's also a mirror. Um, that's why it's so expensive, so dim, and also, uh, it's a mirror. Anyway. The second highest one is $6,000. It's it's a uh, 55 inch 4K TV intended for the outdoors. So it's super bright. Oh. (laughs) Anyway, cheapest TV. (laughs) What do we have? Uh, I wrote one ninety nine. One ninety nine. Okay. I wrote one twenty nine. One twenty nine. I wrote one twenty. 
Unfortunately, all three of you have Are gone over. over. Uh. The cheapest TV at BestBuy.com oh, is in $112. Wait, it's on clearance, though. Oh, is, is it? Yeah. Well, well, that's a hell of a clearance. Oh my God! It's, it is. It saves okay, four hundred and forty-eight dollars. This is exactly. This is exactly. And it also says unavailable. Unavailable nearby. Hmm. But no. But I. No. I. I. It's in store in Brooklyn right now, dude. I'm confirmed. Eight, I'm eight dollars over. <laughs> Please. This That's confirms, the rules. No. 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 <laughs> That's but the But this does confirm that mm. when shopping for a TV, you can literally pick mm. a random number. And yeah. you will find a TV in the size you want. Wow! For that price, why is that on clearance for? It's normally five hundred eighty percent off. That thing must catch on fire. Fifty. <laughs> that thing one hundred percent has a recall it's on it. There's ads, and it has like Alexa built in. Oh, for fifty five. Oh, it's an Amazon brand. Oh, it's their Amazon brand TV. I it's remember. 4K, did you say? Yeah. You can get a 4K 55 inch Amazon branded TV for it's $112. A with Fire TV built in. And all they do is spy on air every <laughs> move. That's but, it. But wow. 4K 55 inch, they're, they're not that expensive. Yeah, like, that's under 1000 can... but 112 well, Yeah, yeah, 112 is crazy. crazy. The Sony Pulse Elite headset that's for the. Uh, the portal thing is more <laughs> expensive than that. It's, it's two more. times as expensive as this. Dang. Wow. Either way, this has been a learning experience. I'm glad we now know just how many different prices there are for 55 inch TVs. And I'm glad that I learned about Pegatron. And <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for listening. And uh, we'll catch you guys next week. <laughs> Peace. R slash new sentence. <laughs> Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. We're partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro outro music was created by Vane Sill. That's not a question. Question Bingo. mark. Let's go. That was terrible. The F-150 would like a word. What? 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 <laughs> it's a red condenser what? cover. I didn't know they did that either. See they that? didn't have to go that hard. Yeah, they, did it's, they, did it, they literally did it. <laughs> <laughs> we would have never known. <laughs>